And welcome back to Let's Play The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. I'm your Let's Player Wadball, and let's right, get right back into it. So when last we left off, we had a we had a few leads. We had the cigarette butts in the outside, where Sarah Carraway was murdered. We had a perfume scent, eau de sen. Eau de sen, I'm sorry. That was supposedly given to Sarah by a lover? maybe? And flowers that were delivered to her anonymously. Henry Carruthers didn't know who he was, and was surprised to find out that the guy wanted to him to leave a message at the Moon Gate, wherever that was. So, we're left with uh, investigating all three of these leads, and seeing if any of them leads us to the murderer. Let's head out, shall we? It's time we made a move, Watson. Carry on, Holmes. I'll follow your lead. So, we had investigated last time. We had done some chemical experiments on a couple of items. One was the powdery specimen. The specimen was extracted from the wool of Sarah Carraway's dress. The sample was located at the point where the murderer first inserted the fatal blade. There is not enough substance to identify it unequivoc unequivocally by eye, but it smells distinctly of camphor. An envelope is sufficient to hold such a small amount. And our analysis showed... In addition to common soap, salt of tartar, and camphor, analysis reveals trace amounts of powdered, highly toxic arsenic. The combination suggests Bacuz arsen arsenical soap, a common preservative compound. Interesting. The other thing that we discovered was this. Analysis of the flower petal has determined that the substance used to color the petals is an industrial cleaning agent with an iodine base. Hmm. Shouldn't be too hard to track down. But Holmes may not be the expert in flowers that we were looking for. Let's talk to Wiggins and see if any of his irregulars can do the job for us, shall we? I require your assistance, Wiggins. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Do you have a job for the irregulars? Yes, Wiggins. I have a certain flower I'd like to see, like you to track for me. Very good, sir. Let's have a look at that. I apologize, my reading skills clearly haven't gotten any better since the last time. We can give the dyed flower to Wiggins. Oh, a flower go? Da, very kind, I'm sure. Don't be impertinent, Wiggins. You know it's not a gift. Now remark those dark lines running through the petals. They were caused by the application of an iodine solution. Find the vendor that sells flowered color colored in this manner. You might want to begin your search around the Regency Theatre on Oxford Street. The Regency, is it, Mr. Holmes? If you're right, it shouldn't take us long to find the cellar. It won't take you long to scroll off screen so I can't finish what you just said. Thank you, mister. Anyway, now that we've investigated Sarah Carraway's flat and found the it's on the rugby sweater. We should ask Mr. Carruthers about that, too. So let's head over to the alley right now. Dr. Watson. Scotland Yard has been uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically efficient, Holmes. It appears that they've moved the body to the morgue. Hmm. Well, let's talk to Henny Carruthers. Let's open the backstage door. It's locked. Huh. We have a key. Let's try using that on the door. Uh. Curious. Let's take a look at the chalk outline. A rough outline of the murder victim drawn in chalk by Scotland Yard for reference in its investigation of the murder site. The body itself and any personal effects have presumably been sent to the morgue. 
Alright, let's get out of here. So now we have a few more options that we can go to. In addition to the three options we had in the first set of videos, 221 Baker Street, Sarah Carraway's flat, and the Regency Theater, or the alley behind the Regency Theater, we now have the South Kensington Field, Bell's Parfumery, and the Southwark Morgue. Where should we go first? Hmm. Let's go to the field. We know for a fact that there was a rugby uniform in Sarah Carraway's flat, which means hmm, that maybe one of these players might know something, right? Do you know anything of the sport, Watson? In my younger days, I had modest success and a wonderful time playing for the Blackheath Football Club. It's difficult to tell whether or not these lads are enjoying themselves. Do you see anything of import, Watson? Not a thing, though my powers of detection are pathetically meager when compared to yours. Hmm, let's see who else we can talk to around here. Excuse me, young man. Uh, I'm a hot hog. It hurts. Uh, also, you're a Elzlacoke. Here I am. Uh, I wonder why he's talking like that. Let's switch to look mode. A hulking backfield player covered with dirt and grass stains bleeds profusely from his nose and mouth. He appears to have been recently separated from two from his two front teeth, and his nose is grotesquely situated on one side of his face. Ouch. That hurts. Okay. The rugby ball. What seemed at first glance to be an enormous anemic pig's bladder turns out to be a slightly deflated rugby ball. Jenkins! Watch what you're about, man. Your tackling's technique betrays no knowledge of the sport. Though it's been years since I've stepped onto a rugby pitch, Holmes, that group looks a sorry lot to me. Seeing as how the rugby players look more like cheerleaders from here, I'd say... yeah. Okay, let's talk to the water boy. Maybe he might be able to give us some more information. Here, boy. Have you seen a young woman named Sarah Carraway watching the practices? I don't think I have ever heard the name, but then my duties keep me very busy, and the players don't talk to me much. I suppose the coach doesn't pay you very well for all your work. Here's an extra shilling for your t for talking for taking the time to talk to us. I don't want no wages, Gov. I like helping the team. I'm gonna be a three-quarter when I grow up. Maybe the coach has something to say to me. Seems like a very mild-mannered man. <sighs> Time to exhaust all options here. What a talented group of muscular lads. The makings of a fine team, if I'm any judge. If you knew anything about Rugagov, you'd know that size don't signify. Give me midgets with heart and the knowledge of the game, and we'll we'd hold our own. I've over got 30 shirt 30 shirkers scattered across this field. With you pestering me, I'll never beat them into shape. Your current club appears to be to have excellent athletic skills. I suspect that your guidance will shape them up sharply into a good team. Not with you hanging over my shoulder. I got 15 blokes who don't know their left foot from their right. <sighs> okay, now that we've exhausted the small talk, let's get to business, shall we? I need to speak with one of your players. And when they left off practicing, you can speak with any of them as long as they you like. But you want to watch? Stand over, stand with those people over there and stay out of the way. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm assisting the police in the investigation of a serious crime. I must speak with a member of your team. <laughs> 